floor. Father, who wants smoke? We got plenty of guns. Don't even think about the camera. Okay, I think we're good. You're good? <clears throat> okay. This thing, boom. Hello. <laughs> Today, we are in this room. This is the interview show where I bring on my friends, family, the people that I want to introduce to you all. Today, we are back in this room. And uh, today, we have a very special guest, uh, the woman who quite possibly has done the most for me out of anybody in my life single-handedly, the young, spunky, surprisingly single, humorous, good-natured woman who I am lucky to call my mother, Annie Gideon. Woo! She's pretty far away, but she's coming. I promise. <laughs> What's up? Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the room. Oh, thank you. <laughs> of course. How's the it going? The room where it happens. Yes. <laughs> How's it going? Good. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful <laughs> day. It's a beautiful day, yeah. No, it's so awesome to get up in the morning, open the doors, open mm -hmm. the windows. Temperature's the same in and out. Right. Sun's shining, birds are singing, right. literally. We, we talk a lot about how, how appreciative we are to, to live here. Yeah, for everything. Not only in this area, in Marin County, how beautiful it is here, but in the location that we live too, uh, surrounded by foliage, a bunch of mountains and trees and birds and stuff like that. So, uh, welcome to the show. You're my second guest Yay! In, in, in this I'm room. Honored. Excuse me one second. What is I just trim. <laughs> I just trim my bangs. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Okay, well, uh, I don't know if you saw my last episode. This is my friend Abby. I haven't who, seen her. I met Abby. But yeah, I you met her. her. Um, I had her do an introduction, but that kind of took a long time. No offense, okay. Abby. So much love. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so, I have some, I have some questions for you that okay. um, would account for your introduction, if that's okay. That's fine. Although, honestly, I was quite honored with the introduction you already oh, gave. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Before you even walked Okay, in good. Here. So that was an introduction. But, Pretty awesome. But more so like an introduction into who you are, what you've okay. done, where sure. you've gone in your life. Let's do it. Unless, before we get into it, if you have anything you want to say or talk about or do anything, or, or if you're just comfortable the way that we are, well, we can proceed. I'm comfortable. Okay. I trust you. Okay, beautiful. I, I appreciate that. I don't know that. what's going on, by the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have no idea what's coming, but I trust you. Okay, off starting right away, just jumping into it. <clears throat> Where were you born? Where were you raised? And what insight did you acquire in those locations that you can now share to our many viewers across the world? I was born in North Carolina, Raleigh, which at the time was quite Southern. Mm -hmm. It was quite Southern, yeah. a lot of open land. So I grew up riding horses and ponies, bareback, barefoot, uh. walking down <laughs> dirt roads in 100 degree weather, riding horses picking blackberries nice. stealing piglets from local farms okay. so I was, I was a southern girl so stealing piglets <laughs> we literally did that i'll have to tell you about it later <laughs> no, I mean, we you, were, could, you could tell me about it now that sounds interesting <laughs> no we like like my cousin angie you know her she's, yeah. she's got, but she has a farm now we both wanted a farm so uh -huh. we lived in the country yeah and we go visit them and we would go out in this tree house and we would i, I still literally have some of them we would make plants 8.45, sneak out of the house, 9 o'clock, da-da-da. Arrive at farmer so-and-so's house, get, was this like, get the piglet. Like liberation? Like pig liberation? No, it was just Just you wanted adventure. the pig. We just wanted the pig. <laughs> okay, that's very so, interesting. So the, the first time we tried to do it, we walked down the dirt road. Everything was like com completely calculated on schedule. And for some absolutely random reason... We're walking on this dirt road, and my mom and her mom yeah. come walking. No way. They just were out on a random walk at night. Yeah, that's super interesting. So that it was, happens. That the was universe boring. works that way. You know what I mean? Maybe you had to be like paused, or something bad yeah. would have happened. Like, had you gone? You know it, what I mean? Exactly. But we were quite young, so we didn't see it that way. Okay, good. Right. So we just went to Plan B, which was to steal a chicken. 
<laughs> from another farmer. Yeah. So it was Angie, her sister, myself. We walked and walked and walked and walked. And my sister, dear. Yeah, my sister, yeah, okay. Angie, and her yeah. sister. Mm-hmm. We walked and walked and walked and walked. We're going all over this barn, like chasing these chickens. My sister's like, this is wrong. This is bad. We had burlap, burlap sacks. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Um, <laughs> the banks. So she says, this is never going to work, and I'm mad, and I'm tired, and this is wrong. So she goes, she goes out. We catch the chicken. Nice. We catch the chicken. Right. Put it in the burlap sack. <laughs> uh-huh. We're walking home, and here comes my sister Mm -hmm. with our older cousin. No way. She went and told. Wow. Thwarted once again. Terry. (laughs) But we did. We at least got it. Okay, good. Okay, don't even ask me what we would have done with it. Right. (laughs) Well, my next question is, what did you do with it then, once you were, like, caught? Oh, we had to go take it back. Interesting. And we were in a lot of trouble. That's so funny. Me and and a friend actually went, uh, you know, over by the dump in, um, in the lumber yard. Mm-hmm. Back on Anderson and Santa Fe. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, you know, there's yeah. like, oh, there's a bird sanctuary there. We went there once. You and I? And I think Eric, or, there were peacocks Yes, the peacocks, there, yes. And so, the, the pigs and the mud, right, because right. it was really yeah. hot. Mm-hmm. So what I was going to say it to you is, so that, is that in high school, me and a friend, me and a handful of friends went over there, like, in attempts to snatch a peacock. But with, okay. a, with a net, like, with a net <laughs> and bags, so, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, we were unsuccessful, but I think all That's of us, so funny. we we didn't catch one. It was it was really funny. It was comical, but I don't think we wanted to catch one, you know, because they were just got so so scared and in dist- like yeah. in distress, you know. We're right. all just like it's really unnatural to, for us to be trying to put one of these in a bag. And it is, yeah. Yeah, and uh, what information? I guess this can be broad. Can you share to our many viewers? Across the world, <laughs> that, that you acquired, and uh, so when I asked that, or when I wrote that question, I so you were born in North Carolina, but I know you were raised in Germany. A lot of your uh, youth was in Germany, yeah, I was raised and in so Europe. I guess like, what kind of information did you pick up while you were acro- overseas and and on the other side of the of the country oh. that is different than the demographic than the demographic here, and how and what information can you? Provide. Okay, I don't know how I can necessarily compare it to the demographic here, but although it may be evident. So, my first 11 years in North Carolina, growing up as a Southern girl, I mm-hmm. feel like that truly is my core. I mean, the nice. Southern values, yeah. the Southern traditions, they're solid and they're deep. And I feel like I've got those true s- Southern girl, I mean, proper, kind, etiquette, manners. Mm-hmm, good. Just good, wholesome southerness. <laughs> cool. And I'm thankful that I have that. Nice. Um, because the, so- the woods, my animals. Nice. I had a virtual little farm. I had a pony. I spent all my days out in the woods with him, with my BB gun Daisy. Cool. Bill and Daisy. And I, so I got that. I feel like I got my yeah. core mm-hmm. there. And, and obviously, I went to Europe. Um, I went to boarding school, a private international boarding school. Mm-hmm. I got the best possible education. That's really great, really great. Played sports, traveled every nook and cranny of Europe, so I mean the the lessons there are, I mean, they're they're too many, they're evident, they're evident, you know, the the expansion of of my world from just living in North Carolina. Okay, cool, well that was good, I thought we covered that really well. And also I came back from, this is important. It's okay, Um, (laughs) we have time, um, I think. I graduated high school from that uh, boarding school. Oh, like interesting. College prep. Mm-hmm. I came back here to go to college. Took placement testing. Yeah. I placed completely out of my freshman year and halfway through my sophomore year of college. So what do you? And it was a simple high school education. It was just done properly. Mm-hmm. What do you think that says about the discrepancies in American education okay. versus? We don't have enough time. Okay, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, it's it's quite different. Because I've raised three three of you watching you go through the public. Right, right. I remember being frustrated system. when we had a table right here, um, yeah. just like talk, talking to you. We were trying to do homework, and you were like, why don't you know this? And I'm like, because yeah. the teacher doesn't explain it. <laughs> because we can't, because he doesn't do anything. He just gives us the packet and says do it, yeah, and then sits at his desk while was, we just, while we just yeah. are... While we're, while we're goofing off in the class. It was you know very what I mean? frustrating. And so yeah. re- regarding this location, this actually transitions very well into okay. Good. my next question. Okay. Um, can you please share to our many viewers what... <laughs> <laughs> to our many viewers across the world, I actually wrote that down, what it is like to have a 22-year-old sleep in your living room? 
That you, okay, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. However, it could be perceived in, from many different contexts. Okay, you cool. could just be an arbitrary twenty-two-year-old. You okay. could just be having having your son still live at home, taking up the majority of the common space, with with boundaries, uh, barriers okay. that we put up. Healthy well, boundaries. Healthy boundaries. Uh, I mean that yeah. physically, like the right. uh, the. Um, but also, what's it? The curtain and what's it? What's it called? The curtain. What, what do they call it? <laughs> the, the thing that splits the room, that divides the room. What do you Divider? call it? Divider? Yeah. <laughs> but there's, <laughs> there's something else. I, it's just the, the wall. No, the... Um, um, the box. Oh my gosh, it's okay. Um, okay. Yeah, well, what's it like? Okay, uh, what's well, it like? I, I can't answer that objectively. Okay. Because you and I have history. True. We have history. Yeah. So you're moving back here. Obviously, I mean, we transformed the place physically together. Yeah. You've helped. You've helped me, and I. And I think, I hope, you've helped us to rewrite mm -hmm. some of the very, very painful and damaging history. Right, right. Which much was on me. Right. So well, all of it was all of it was on me. So it's been incredibly healing. I don't think about it's. I have a twenty-two-year-old living right. in my house. Yeah. At okay. All. Good. Um. You. You help to ground this place. You bring a beautiful energy. Thank you, you and I have healthy boundaries and good communication, and it's an asset to my life. Good. That's really great. And I... it's been incredibly healing in the whole energy of this place because we had we had years of mm -hmm. very painful, damaging, toxic experiences, mm -hmm. and they they came from me so I mean you've given me a chance to heal I Good. feel like you've given us a chance to heal right to transform the energy here which helps your brother and your sister heal so I love it good thank you I, I, love I, it. I I'm grateful I anticipated a positive response <laughs> so thank you and I'm also very appreciative okay. on my end because remember when I moved out of my Fairfax house, I actually wanted to move somewhere super far away mm -hmm. because I had like those savings saved up and I just like, yeah. and I think that w the things that you mentioned, the toxic things that were there, I just, I don't think I was ready to confront you it. Were. And so I was, yeah. just went away. And when you, what is that freaking thing called? When you were even here, um, and we, I was here before I moved out of my last place, which was not at my dad's house or here, it was somewhere like uh, in the same county, but deep away. Um, like 20 minutes from here. What is that freaking thing called? You were like, you were saying we could put up one of those it's and a, it, there's a word, there's <laughs> a word for it. Um, Someone help us out here. Yeah, I'm, no. gonna, I'm gonna hit a Google really quickly. Benjamin, um, there's I a, called there's it a divider. No, there's a, uh, okay, it's okay. We're, I think we're wasting no, okay, yeah. films. Okay, it's okay, so. no, no, there's enough film. Okay, so. but, um, I mean moments. Yeah, when you were talking uh, about putting this up, Partition. Partition. <laughs> partition. Partition. It's a no partition. partition. That's it. Good. Okay. When you were when you were talking about putting up the partition and putting a mattress here, before this was even a different color, and I spent a few weeks putting up all this stuff. Now we're, I'm just hijacking the conversation. To look at Which what I good. did. Um, I was like still in the back of my head, like no, like you know, I don't know, you know, I wanted to go live out on my own, but I would have ran out of money really quickly. Um, <laughs> Hey, yeah, I still was against like both cats came in. I still yeah. was against the yeah, idea, but I'm really appreciative of the space that you've held for me and the person that I've been able to develop into because of the space here. You know how comfortable it is yeah. and, and paying minimal rent and minimal um, other stuff. You know what I mean? It's been uh, right. allowed me to put a lot of work into my art and myself. Your passion. And look who I am now. Your passion. Look what I, I became. You know what yeah. I mean? I've watched you. I've watched every every moment of it. Yeah. And so I'm really appreciative. And now, like, all of this, all of the groundwork and the foundation that has been set of mm -hmm. who I am is something that I'm going to be able to bring with me for my whole entire life once I do eventually leave, which, again, will be, which I've told you, will be within the year. May. 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 Once, once this blows up, once the YouTube blows up and, and we start making David right. Dobrik, David Dobrik, Amber Chamberlain kind of money, it's like, all right, let's get out of this place. So very quickly, there was yeah, a, a there was a necessary transition for you too. When you came out of that, you came out of the year in uh, San Francisco State, mm -hmm. which was not so great, and then you came out of six months of that Fairfax house. You yeah. were 
like you were almost traumatized. I don't think you were in any kind of place to just pick up and go somewhere else. No. You needed this. You needed a transition. You needed to breathe. I right, feel absolutely. like it helped you heal here. It helped you heal with heal with me. I feel like it gave you time and space and breath to come to terms with things with your father. In order to to create a a, a springboard. Right. A, a solid right. Foundation absolutely. Of springboard. Foundation is very so, important. Yes. Okay, um, I'm trying to think of which question I should ask. Okay, uh, we're going to get a little bit more. <laughs> both our kitties are here. And then both our cats are just gravitate. hanging out. They gravitate to us. Hey, Kimba. Okay, so I'm going to ask you something. This is a three-part question. We're okay. kind of distancing from just us. Okay. We're going to be going more into the world. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> And so I just did an interview, this is a little preface to the question and, and why this is being brought up. First of all, me being put on the camera, uh, so as I mentioned to you that I've opened my third eye and I can just get very blatant communication in my head yes. without needing to see yes. anything or do anything. Mm -hmm. And so right. I remember when I was first started making film, I picked up my camera one time and before I even, and I didn't say anything, Ben Gideon didn't say anything, but the word that was put through my head when I picked it up was communication, like that you can use this thing to communicate to the world. And so as I just did an interview with In This Car, this is In This Room, I also have another right. interview series called In This Car, I just did an interview show with one of my best friends, Aaron, also Benedictson. Dixon, um, and there was it was being pushed on me to bring up uh, Philando Castile, the person who was murdered in, um, in uh, Minnesota by the police, and just like that, uh, I was being pushed today to bring up this, so I will proceed. <clears throat> Okay, are you aware that there are currently over 2 million Uyghur, or, or Uyghur, my apologies for mispronunciation, Muslims in military-grade protective facilities or re-education camps in China, very much like those used to eradicate the Jewish population in Nazi Germany? No idea. Okay. Never heard anything about that. Part two. On top of that... Are you aware that um, companies such as Apple, Google, Adidas, Nike, Ralph Lauren, the North Face, Puma, Amazon, and Mercedes-Benz are capitalizing off of these prisoners, forcing them to do cheap manual labor while captive and unable to leave? Okay. <laughs> oh, there, you could, there's a third one and a third question. You can just say yes or no. I didn't know it, but it doesn't surprise me. Okay, good. Oh, beautiful. That, that transitions. That that, yeah, that, uh, right, right, no. right. Okay, and three, what do you think this says about our democratic system as a whole? That what do you think that this says that about sorry. our... No, my apologies. I was just reiterating. I feel anyway. like I mumbled it. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you think that this, that this says about our democratic system as a whole? That these super large companies, one of uh, Apple... That I, I just chose like maybe eight names from a list of mm -hmm. 40 companies like... LL Bean and all these other really large yeah, companies, I I right? Of the yeah. the products that we consume are using super cheap uh, mm -hmm. forced labor from people who are in concentration camps and cannot leave in mm -hmm. in in China. So I guess the the uh, most important question is, what do you think that it says about our democratic system that um, that these large companies have the ability to to exploit um, a labor from these super less off countries and people who don't who don't even want to be doing it. And just receive like a tenth of the thing, receive like a tenth of, receive like a thousandth of a yeah, percentage of the that. working that the product that they're creating will be sold for. So what do you yeah. what do you think it says about our our system as um, a whole? A option A, it's um, it's a capitalization on capitalism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it, it's exploiting the system, which. Is what keeps. I mean, our middle class has disappeared. I don't, you, I don't know that you all like were really even in the world when we had a true middle class. Right, right. So those who aren't wealthy are in power. We, we're we're controlled. We're either we're just surviving. So right. we don't know what they do. We don't know what the government knows. We don't know what the gov government does. So that's option A. The option B is. What it says about our democratic society is that it's not a democracy. Mm. It's a, it's it's a it's a fantasy. It's like a blanket, blanket uh, democracy. We really are in kind of a fascist state. 
And also shout out to Portland right now. I don't know if I would be if I would know about what's going on in Portland, Oregon right now if it weren't for Twitter. But in the past like 24 hours, there's been over a million tweets uh, with the word Portland in it because somebody we want to say the head or the head office has uh, ordered a fascist uh, or like this is what is evident about our fascist regime that the regime that there are these military grade people coming into Portland just with no accountability no uh, no labels just taking people off the streets mm-hmm. and, and removing mm-hmm. that removing the protesters because they just haven't died down yet with this Black Lives Matter movement you know what I mean it's like okay let's time to re- re- reclaim our streets it's super interesting so there's no accountability they're coming through and just taking people off the streets and putting them in cars and they don't know where they're going uh, unidentified um, no, unidentified no, I'm, I'm, I'm spec aware, ops of spec that. ops people it's, it's really crazy and it's like, okay, what can we do? What can the people do against this? I think it's, I think it's another example of how critical this civil rights movement is. It's mm-hmm. the, the, the largest and most critical civil rights movement in the history of our country. Right, it's beautiful. So we just pray and pray and pray, but I think it's another example of how truly powerless we are in this country. Truly powerless. Yeah. Because honestly, mm-hmm. what can they do? Nothing. What can uh, who, they do? Who? These protesters, when these unidentified it's, militia are infiltrating right, them, right, right. What can they do? I know. Nothing. I mean, the, the nothing. Po- the power of the people is literally impenetrable, though. It's like that if we all get, we all came together, and the class consciousness is a class awakening. And then what would be? It's not like we're. They are not. Um, uh, like like talking back and forth with us. They're they're not. What's the word? They're not like compromising for us. Like they're not. Um, so I don't think that we're gonna go in there and try to ration rationalize with them. You know, it's like it needs to be like okay, we're gonna take this no, from y'all I, if y'all, if y'all I, aren't gonna give us anything. Yeah, I understand a thousand percent. Yeah. This, but the specific question: What are we to do about these unidentified militia who yeah. arrest and take right. away? I don't. Know. I don't think there's anything we can do. I don't. I don't know. We've got to start at step one, and I think we're still mm-hmm. at step one. So I guess and step I one is even mentioning. I think that's almost like a, like an extraneous factor mm-hmm. because of the real issue. I think right. we need to just stay on the real issue. I mean, all the, what's we're, the real there issue? Are, there are a thousand conversations about this different stuff. The way the government's handling, yeah, the, way the military's yeah. handling, the way the population There's so doesn't many. believe the same way we believe. Right. Are against the protesting and against yeah. the, all of it because it's right. disturbing their little comfort bubble. Mm-hmm. So I just think it's one step at a time. The real issue is <laughs> the real issue is Black Lives Matter. Right. From the deeply, deeply, deeply ingrained in our brains from the the day everyone said from this country yeah. is there. They're inferior beings. Yeah, interesting. And it's generation after generation. The issue is Black Lives Matter. Nice. And honestly, people think think they don't. I think they I think they, they the, do not matter. Interesting. Even Especially in, over the value of a white person. Right, name. right. That's to me. Even that's uh, the whole here issue. in Novato, there were. Um, there were a bunch of Trump protesters, like on the um, on the on the bridge. Maybe tw- a, a group of twenty or thirty people yeah. with um, in Novato here, just like what bridge? Uh, just like, on one of like the over overheads. Oh yeah, the overpass. Yeah, yeah. Overpasses. Yeah. And this black woman went up to them and started recording them, saying, "What are you doing? What What's your? Why are you out here? Right. Like, what are you protesting? What point are you trying to get across?" And someone said to her, like right in her face, "Our point across is so that you can be a slave again." What? Someone here. Oh, Trump supporters. Trump supporters. Yeah. I mean, but would you be surprised if Donald Trump said that? And would you be surprised if he had no repercussion? <laughs> there won't be. Any I mean, wh- what what more can he show us to show us that he is an absolute piece there, of garbage? There, there won't be repercussions, and this is a and, and that he's topic. absolutely not for the people at all. And I mean, no. and that's even an understatement. And like, I feel like what you said about how we don't know what the government is doing i mean like we only only <laughs> right i know and the things that just trickle trickle down the information that trickles down to us is so oh my gosh we have a visitor hi how's it going hey, i got some packages from you they were delivered next door oh, okay that's super okay that's perfect you could just four of them. okay cool you could just put that down we're, we're like we're shooting a video here i i put down here. yeah I, I appreciate it thank you so who much who is it um it's uh, elaine Oh, Elaine, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Sorry to 
Bobby. No, not a problem. Thank you. Welcome addition to our video. (laughs) Yeah. um, Kind neighbors. Yeah, black lives. What can you say? Right, black lives matter. Um, It's time to to assimilate fully. So, for for, for four hundred years. Let's just pray. Let's pray that the protests don't dissipate. Let's pray (sighs) that this movement doesn't give up. And along these same lines, the Confederate statues, the Confederate flags that Trump is opposing taking down. Yeah. There is literally a pervasive, massive nationwide misunderstanding about the Civil War. They think it's about, most people think it's about the North and the South. The Civil War was about slavery. That's Mm -hmm. all it was about. Right, right. The, the Confederate were the, the Southerners who wanted to keep slavery in place. Right, interesting. And the Northerners not. So and they're so, the Confederate. They're the ones who, who enslaved the people. They're the ones who created the, the evil and the damage. And so these statues are of these Confederate know, soldiers who the, fought to keep the blacks in slavery. And, and, and Trump and the people and the are still supporting the cause. Who say don't take them down? It's it. It's so it's unfathomable. It's, um, like, yeah, it's white white out. nationalist. Um, <sighs> uh, the, 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 the Aryan the Aryan race, right? Just the people who believe that the white people are just are just are better. White supremacy. White supremacy. Not not very far off from Hitler. That was his entire mm-hmm. thing, right? No, in this household. Remember the book Night. I do remember book night. night. Yeah, the book night. Um, yeah, it's good. We read it. You, in hi- we read it in high school. Yeah, and you gave it to me. Oh, interesting. It's good. Need him. Okay, cool. So, um, my apologies for the mispronunciation to the to the Uyghur Muslims. We see you. Shout out. We're wishing you the best. Mm-hmm. Prayers up. And then, so that goes back yeah, to the question right. of to these large companies. We know that they're using this really cheap, very mm. uh, very twisted labor yeah, to. Um, to, to create their products such as the iPhone that I have such as the MacBook that mm-hmm. I have such as the Nikes that I wear on my feet are we going to stop purchasing them? What do we do? Do we boycott these companies? And then if um, if we do are we are we as a collective okay sacrificing these products that we bring into our lives so that that isn't the reality? So that that isn't true? That that happens on the other side of it? You know what I mean? And and just the margins of which um, they're, they're being paid to which they're being sold is absolutely disgusting. You know what I it's mean? Beyond, it's, it's beyond. It's beyond. It's inhumane. It's inhumane. It's, 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 it's wicked. It's, it's just twisted. Inhumane. Yeah, it's you treat a dog worse. What, what, what I would you say, say. What? Dog horse? You would treat a dog. Worse. Oh, treat that. I, I was fact, just reading an article it, and, on it. And like, I mean, you shouldn't even treat a dog. Actually, most people right, no. don't treat their dogs. <laughs> no, <that yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah. but to answer uh, your question, do we boycott it and why? And if we don't, why don't we? Yeah. What I think immediately is if anyone believed that it would make any kind of a difference, I believe the, the movement would be overwhelming. But I think we all know, boycott or don't boycott, they have all the power and it's not gonna make any difference. Buy the MacBook, don't buy the MacBook. Right. It's not gonna change. That's Interesting. my take on it. It's almost like with the marketing too, that the, with the money that they put into marketing, it's like they have all the power like in, uh, as if we had, we claim that we have like the wrong decision or like that we have the buying power you know what I mean but the buying power but we didn't make the decision to purchase it because it was like pressed on us for so many we years are, we're not anyway. making the decision so that's we're not a, I think that's decision. an I think that's an excellent point we we believe we're making decisions but they're being made for us yeah okay um <sighs> I know it's heavy stuff I'm getting good. like a knot in my solar plexus Okay, cool. So I have one more question before we play a little game. This has okay. been fun. A little like I guess a shotgun interview around like thirty minutes. Um, so I guess this might just expand the conversation a little bit further. Over the past few months, life has changed for us all as outrage sparked over the public unjust. No, <clears throat> my apologies. As the police and un- over police injustice, as we found ourselves in quarantine, and as the system that we knew got turned on its head. Do you think that this transformational burst was accumulated? And why do you think the people are so mad? Wait, could you clarify why the people are so mad? Because there, there are many different groups of people who are mad. Like why, people are mad about the quarantine. People are mad why are about, people in the streets rioting? About, why are people finally getting pissed off? Why is enough is enough now? I think it's. I, I think you made an excellent point. It's cumulative. I think it's universal. I think it's 
energetic. I think this has been coming for a very long time. Right, right. This is my personal belief. The minute Trump walked into office, I believed, I believe things be universally began to build because it's so bad. Mm-hmm. It, it's so evil. And it became transparent in it's that moment so as well. I think uni- so evil. universally, literally universally, I mean, how can it be an accident? The woman in Central Park followed by three deaths in I know, two weeks right? while we, we have all a the time in the world. virus and the world is shut down and the government is paying us and we have, like, it, it, this, is, this is no accident. I, know. I believe it's, it's absolutely about cumulative. It's far overdue. <sighs> and I just thank oh. God. Uh, give me one I just hope, I just hope it, it, it doesn't dissipate. I don't, yeah, I, I hope it doesn't dissipate as well. I don't think that it will. I hope it doesn't dissipate. Think, things has have changed, to, finally. It just, um, has, with, to, just has to change. Yeah, with George Floyd change. happening, it was it was kind of like the final step, I want to say. It, it was, was the third it was, in two weeks. The, yeah, the third what? The third, third, the, um, the third African-American brutal, kill. Basically murder. Breonna Taylor, Aubrey, Ahmaud Aubrey, George Floyd. Ahmaud Aubrey was hunted down with shotguns mm-hmm. like an animal. Mm-hmm. I mean, George Floyd was finally like, all right, here's the final push. Y'all are going to be assimilated into our society. You know what I mean? And it started but, but with I, the woman's... But, but sorry, saying, sorry, thank you, it's sorry. all good. Um, but by saying that, I'm not saying that the, that, the, that it's over, that the fight is over. I mean, there, there's so much more, and and um, I I don't wish it, but there's, I mean, there's still going to be... Um, there's still going to be racism. There's still going to be people... There's still going to be... People treating people of different races poorly. We see it all over Twitter every single day, and we still have a lo- have a long way to go. But this is, um, this was just something that brought it to light, and was like, okay, is this really going to be the way that things are? And the answer was no. As a collective, as a people, we said no. It's not going to be the way things are. Yeah. And so a big mm-hmm. part of me too, a big question is too, is like, what part of history are you going to be on? You know, I felt that when I was here. Oh wow. Um, when I was here, yeah. um, when. When Twitter was blowing up, like uh, two or three days after George Floyd had been killed, I couldn't just be here. You know, I it was that. weird. No, it was I, like, I and I tried no, to I do anything, that. and I felt like every single thing that I did was selfish. Okay, I'm gonna what? I'm gonna try to like write this song. I mean, but I did end up writing songs that were hella all about this. I still have energy about it that I guarantee is coming through. It's gonna come through. I tried to read. I tried to do anything, but it was just I just felt it was about me. You know what I mean? So now it's like, okay, we're going to attach what is happening to uh, attach this energy to something that is bigger than me. And you even see all of these really large rappers um, <clears throat> who have been quiet yeah. for a really long time out in the streets marching. People are like, oh, look, they're here. But guess what? It's just one out of so many. And I'm sure that they understand it too, that it's not about the individual at this point. Yeah. It's, well, about, it's just, about the collective and, yeah. and integrating everybody, every American citizen who is here um, into our society that everybody is treated fairly everybody has the, has the equal <clears throat> equal and um, equal opportunity to do the same exact things as everybody else and in this that one happening just brought everything to light and so like, okay things are still very very one-sided and lopsided and if it's about time if we're being real about having black people be integrated into society let's be fucking real about it exactly and, and what are we going to do about it as individuals? What can we do? What what kind of resources and talents do we have to to help help push that in in um, in that direction? And man, I don't I don't know if shout out is the right word, but and so back to the question of what side of history do you want to be on? To all these people who are still waving the Trump flag somehow after how gnarly this individual know, is. Well, we know. We, what what we are know you doing? Is, you know what I mean? It, it's. It's willful ignorance. It's blind allegiance. That's all it is. It's willful ignorance and blind uh, there allegiance. Was, there was one tweet that I saw. Thank you. Give me one second. Like, um, no, it's totally fine. I mean, 30 sec- thirty minutes. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll cut it really soon, but this is important stuff. Okay. Um, we're, we've, we've been filming for about 32 minutes. Okay. Um, yeah, I, there was one tweet that I saw about, like, uh, something It was so sad. Like, uh, imagine... Um, imagine... Just being so ignorant and your life being your life being so narrow to where all of the science, all of the teachers, all of the doctors are all mm-hmm. incorrect. That you're just disregarding all the information yeah. from all of the top doctors and all your only beacon of truth and light is this gelatinous 
orange, yeah, disgusting and, 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 um, dude. It's, it's, it's blind. Um, orange. who is, uh, who, who you follow? Uh, who is your only beacon of light? It, it's really yeah. sad. Shout out, uh, BLM. We're hyped to have y'all here. Thank you so much for what you've done for the culture, for the for United States. Yeah. What would the United States be without y'all? You know what I mean. And also, um, you know where you guys are going. You know I, I made this I made this point one time that that God is going to handle it. I made it to a friend, and she was she was very um, she took it very very wrong, or she was very offended by it that I said that almost. We don't have to do anything because God, the Lord, Jesus, will take care of your assimilation. You know, um, at the very beginning of J-Rock and Jay-Z's album, uh, their, their collaborative album, uh, A Written Testimony, is it talks about how, how, the chosen prophet, uh, how the chosen prophet Elijah said the black people are God's chosen people. Just give it a few hundred years. I'm not saying that we're going to wait a few hundred years to have y'all assimilate into our society. We, we, already want, have. we want it and demand it now. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's okay. We are, we already have waited a few hundred. We, years. We, yeah, we already have waited they, a few hundred years. I'm not. I'm not. But right. uh, but I'm saying in a few hundred years, I'm not <laughs> by saying that I'm not saying that we're gonna that we're gonna wait or that we need to be passive about these about the injustices that are happening now. But in a few hundred years, y'all are gonna shine, 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 shine over, shine <laughs> over us in ways that we can only shine over y'all by force. Y'all are gonna shine over us with beauty. Watch it through your natural, through your natural roots. Through it's God, right? through, God, through God, my mother says, and and, and I believe as well. Yeah. So shouts out to all of y'all. Okay. This was been, this has been a good interview. It's been like, been about thirty five minutes. I guess we could uh, continue conversing. Um, Aaron, oh boy, but um, shout okay. out to Aaron. Shout out to. Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, okay, so and, game. Let's wait, wait, game wait, wait. Anything wait, wait. that you want to air out or anything that's in your mind before we go on? Uh, just one, man. Yeah. Okay, just one statement you mentioned where, yeah. um, um, you know, Black Lives Matter, in, in, in a while, we'll have equal rights. I feel like, like right now, right. we're so far, so far from that. I think <laughs> literally, I believe literally what I see is what, let's just take black mothers. Forget equal rights. These mothers don't have the peace and safety when their kids leave their house every right. single morning mm-hmm. they have to be afraid right so forget equal rights give me the peace of mind of knowing that when my son leaves this morning well, he's going to come home and yeah. not get shot dead yeah right it's an absolutely pervasive part of the culture now they have to have the conversations with the kids very young how do you not get killed by a white cop so I think literally that's where we're starting mm-hmm. good right we still have a long way to go but if they could, I mean, that's, that's just it's in here. We stand. <laughs> we do. We stand. Okay, game. Wait, let's get a uh, thumbnail. What's the thumbnail? Just so, like, that's the picture that okay. I'll do. All right, cool. Good stuff. Okay. okay, so that's really good. That was a really good introduction okay. to my mother, to the where I'm living. Yeah. Life, Thanks, I've, of Thanks course, for I, f- I for sure could continue talking about this right about 35 minutes. I appreciate y'all being in, tapping in. Uh, yeah, we had a few good topics. So we thought that we would end on a lighter note. Uh, this g- w- of a little game. <laughs> this game is called Generational Differences. I had my mother write down five names. Uh, in of five names who are icons or legends or people who were super big and popular in her generation and I wrote down five names of which I would think 80 or 90 percent of my generation that if they heard the name they would know it right off the off the cuff no doubt and so I'm gonna ask her if she if she knows these names and she's gonna ask me if I know these names and we'll see if they match up I don't know if we're gonna play in a competition or something but I just thought it would be fun okay well okay I'd like to start off by saying this is gonna be fun but I already don't think I'm gonna know any answers Okay, I cool. really don't. <laughs> okay. okay, cool. Um, okay. It's not that I, I'm not involved in my kids' lives. I just don't think I'm not. Okay, okay, would you like so, to start? You can just okay. say, say your first name. I made it a little bit easy. Whitney Houston. I have heard of Whitney Houston. But who is she? Like, what's her significance? Okay, cool. She's a singer. Um, listen in. No. Mac Miller has a line where he where he mentions him. I just heard mentions her. I just heard it. Well, uh, you can't say I've heard of her. No, no. Yeah. She, okay, she's a singer. I guess I don't know where she's from. I don't know. I can't name any of her albums. So you really don't. So know. I don't. You just know you heard the name a lot. Of she I. 
I know she died of an overdose. She did in the Beverly in the Beverly Hills hotel bathtub. Mm-hmm. Whitney Houston. Uh, yeah, she was a she was literally a superstar. Okay. Um, she sang good. the whole soundtrack for Bodyguard and. Um, Nope. <laughs> okay, that's it. Okay, good. I should I should look into her. You know of her. Whipping it. I forget Mac Miller's line. Okay, this is a really big one that he's nominated for a bunch of Grammy nominated for a bunch of Grammys last year. Um, for five Grammys, I en- ended up coming home with zero. Condolences, bro. Uh, so much love to you to what you're doing. I I think hell of people already know who I'm talking about. Have you heard of the name Travis Scott? So it's okay. I did, he's, I he's like, I want to say he's, I mean, he's like top three okay. well, right I, now. Okay, well, I don't know. Okay, cool. Travis I Scott, what, even, Travis Scott, one know. of the so. biggest hip hop artists in the okay. absolute, in the world right now. So let's move on. Yes or no? Okay. The Jetsons. No, I think I've again. I may have heard of them, but but off the top of my head, I don't know if that's a band. I don't know if that's full of men. I don't know. It's uh, a TV show. Oh, <laughs> look at that! It's a TV no. show. It was animated. And it was literally futuristic to where they had robots and flying things and cordless telephones. Yeah, yeah. It was the future, the Jetsons, when mm-hmm. I was a kid, that we're living now. Yeah. It was, so anyway, it was a huge okay, thing. Okay, cool. Jetsons was, was a huge thing. Okay, okay, cool. No, I didn't know that. Good one. Yeah. One point for you. I don't know if we're doing points. Okay. Um, okay, this is kind of a funny one. I know everyone knows this person too, especially after last night because him and Drake just dropped two songs. Y'all know who I'm talking about. DJ Khaled. Have you ever heard of the name DJ Khaled? I'm so out of it. I'm so out of it's the okay. loop. It's I, okay. It's not okay. It's, I should um, be in this. He's a hip-hop producer. It's part of your lives. He's a hip-hop producer who did a lot of mainstream songs, which off the top of my head I can't tell you right now, but him and Drake. Do you know Drake? That was also yeah, one I do of my, know Drake. Okay, good. That was also one of my names on here. Just dropped two songs last night, and he's really big, really yeah. he's okay, famous. I know, I know Drake. So, should we move on? Uh, okay. yes, okay. go on, sure. Okay. I know you all are going to know this one. I made it easy. Meg Ryan. Meg Ryan? <laughs> no, no. Uh, she, I, is she an artist? Meg Ryan? No, it's not so funny. She said I made it easy. She's, he's going to, what okay, is it? Okay, I'm going to give you two names. Sleepless in Seattle. Uh, is that with, um, Tom Hanks? Yes. And the boy. Yes. But I only knew that because I went to this. In and the, who was the, the girl? The blonde, cute. The Meg, Meg girl. Ryan. Meg Ryan. Um, you've got mail. <laughs> mm. I've heard, I know of it. I know it's cheesy. Meg Ryan. Meg Ryan. I bet if I saw a photo, I I would, I would know her. But off the top of my head now. So, okay, Sleepless in Seattle. Absolutely famous, iconic, classic scene that will never die. She's with Billy Crystal. No, just Billy Crystal. That you've okay. got mail is is Tom Hanks. They're not getting along. Wait, like, Sleepless in Seattle is Tom Hanks. Right? Why, why? Oh, we can't do this. We're, we're just not Yeah, okay, on. good. It's okay. okay anyway, let's go on. Let's okay, sure, on. sure, okay. sure. Okay, I'm going to give you... I have two more. We, I will just sandwich them together. Okay. Okay, have you ever heard of the rapper J. Cole? Yes. Cool. That's yes. that's this guy right here. Okay. Who, who have the, K, right, right. the, the yeah, album introduced, vinyl. You introduced And me. okay, I'll do one more uh-huh. and, we'll, and we'll conclude. Thanks so okay. much for being on the okay. show. Um, have you ever heard of the rapper DaBaby? No. Okay, here's the number one the number one song globally as we sit here. Okay. I've got to get in... I love that this happened because I I gotta enter this world. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's yeah. it's what it's all about. I'm gonna lump my last two together: Bruce Willis and the Brady Bunch. Either one. I know, of course, Bruce Willis. Um, he was in Transformers. I'm just joking. He was in Die Hard, of course. And he's he's a Die Hard. Yeah, and he was married to. Adorable, beautiful, adorable. Way young, far younger. Give me more. Oh, okay, cool. Married to Demi Moore, they have three daughters. And then the Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch? No. no. Jeez, that's no. good. Of course no. I've heard of them, but I can't, I can't tell you about the history it's, of them or whatever. It's, it's a woman with three daughters, a man with three sons. This was back when life was perfect in the 60s, and they married, oh. so it was six, so yeah. six kids. The nuclear there was family. A, there was a, oh, it's a TV show. Uh, it's a TV show. Okay, Very cool. Very popular for many, many, many Okay, cool. It set a terrible example for what... 
people expect their families to be. <laughs> I feel it, and we've come, we've come a long way. We've it's come a, a long way. We've come way. a long way. That's really crazy. We definitely have with that. Um, so anyway. And so that goes back also to the idea. It's okay. Don't, don't worry about yeah, it. Like and people, and people can stay if they want to stay. Okay. You know what I mean? If they okay, If it's good. too long, they would have left already. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, really I agree. Know. Big, big full circle. It's crazy how the media pushed what we were supposed to be back in the day, and that in that nineteen sixties image of what was supposed to be mm-hmm. is everything against what we're talking about it should be now. You know what yes. I mean? And so that George, what happened with George Floyd is like, no more excrete it from well, the from the mindset of what absolutely is. Absolutely pray that it doesn't dissipate. That the, that the, the movement August, that the movement doesn't dissipate. August will be. Very yeah, the March on Washington the, the in the, yeah, March on Washington be over in August. People, right, it'll be a lot. It'll be a lot. Yeah. There. Okay, cool. So I agree with my mom. I still have energy about discussing this kind of stuff. So maybe I'll go to my studio and just write some bars about it. Y'all will probably see it sooner or later. But I agree with my mom. That we're about forty-five minutes in, and uh, forty-five. Yeah, forty-five minutes. That's crazy. It goes by so quickly. Am I right? Yeah, it was a bit long. No, it's, I mean, it's funny. I hope it wasn't long one day. No, it is long, but look at me explaining this, making it longer. Uh, it is long. <laughs> um, it is long, but but I feel like there's a lot of content in there, too. There's a lot of content. And there, there, there wasn't, there wasn't many uh, dry sp- spots. But it's okay. Thanks so much for joining so, us. good stuff. The good news is this is totally irrelevant to your life. <laughs> That's totally relevant to my life, so it helps yeah. me. No, I, I should know that. I should know no. that. No, because the, uh, no, it's, it's irrelevant history. This is present day. That's not irrelevant. So, it's okay. Not irrelevant. okay, there were stars. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Thanks for joining <laughs> us again. I still have a lot of energy about this. I'm gonna go write some bars or potentially mm-hmm. like that, something like that. I appreciate y'all stopping by. If you guys haven't yet, I'm not gonna say what you think I'm gonna say. If you haven't yet, uh, go check out my walking a universal path videos. Those are kind of the epitome of my of my character of my person here on earth and what I'm trying to trying to get out uh, while I'm here. Unique, kind of cool stuff. Dope. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us here <laughs> in this room. This is episode two. Peace out. No, no wait, I'm sorry. Episode two with my mom. Peace out. Peace out. She <laughs> said peace out. <laughs> Woo. Okay. All right, cool. That was okay. dope. <laughs> All right. That was cool, man. That was fun.